Hello and a very warm welcome to the late breaking F1 podcast presented by Harry Eade and me, Samuel Sage. That's right, when Ben decides not to turn up, Harry actually decides to make an appearance. You're welcome. It's lovely to have you, mate. It's been a while. Thank you. We are um, going to be reviewing the Hungarian Grand Prix today. <sighs> We're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a good go, just the two of us. So if you do find it a little bit different, weird, bad... It's because Ben isn't here, and we're trying our best. So, um, I can argue a lot happened in the Grand Prix. Um, Or not a lot. Sure. Some things happened. Some things did happen. We certainly had a race. Yes, it happened. Kind of. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be reviewing a few areas of the race. We're going to have a few topics for you. Uh, Right at the back end of the race, of course, from Discord as well, we've got our moments of the race. We're also going to be talking about how Ricardo managed in his first weekend. And also a quick word on, should Magnussen be worried after another poor weekend? Because right down the very back end of the Grand Prix. Um, We're going to be discussing Mercedes. Can they maximise the weekend? Are you happy with George Russell's performance? We're also going to be looking at the turnaround in fortunes between McLaren, Ferrari and Aston Martin. But we're going to start with Red Bull winning their 12th in a row. And this was recorded as the most dominant victory in time form since Hamilton's 2021 Russian Grand Prix win. Is this is it? Is this bigger than Spain this year? Yeah, 35 seconds. What was Spain? Uh, It was in the 20s. Oh, no. Yeah, quite worrying. So... With how the teams have been coming together a little bit recently, were you surprised to see Red Bull so far up the road this race? Uh, I think after yesterday, yes. I think after the entire weekend, because Friday they didn't really look dominant. But yeah, I think they might have outplayed everyone else because I think a lot of teams went for... Obviously, Hungary is difficult to overtake at. And I think a lot of teams, McLaren, Mercedes... Um, they prioritised the Saturday. Yeah, I think I think they might have gone for a quali setup, which obviously worked for Hamilton. But in the race, that Red Bull was, oh, it's quite quick, speedy boy. Imagine my dad texted me this. Imagine if Max was just allowed to just go, not like manage anything. Yeah, yeah, that car would be immense. Yeah, I mean it already is, but it would be so difficult to deal see with. See you later. So, um. Yeah, so in that sense, I think I think that maybe exaggerated it, but yeah, like that was, he was as soon as uh, he got past in turn one, that was it. See you later, lads. Yeah, I'm gone. And what was worrying that came from the comms box while we were watching, we were watching the Sky Sports UK show, is that Crofty quite comfortably said that you know constructors championship could be done as early as Monza, and Verstappen oh. could win the drivers as soon as Singapore, and that's with Perez consecutively scoring you know second or third places. You know if he keeps missing out on points, it could come earlier. Um, is it the most dominant car of all time now? They have of course got the record for twelve in a row, never been done before. You, well, I guess officially it, you can say it is. It's um, the thing is with the, the comparison to the the record they beat, which is. Uh, MP4-4, uh, M- right? Yeah, MP4-4. Four, four. Yeah. That car was, in terms of actual time, was so far ahead of the rest of the field. The gap was huge. Like, just any one. So, I still think the gap... We, we still have a tighter, closer field than we do... Uh, than they did back yeah. then. Yeah. Um, but, yes, yeah, it's, it's quite a good car. It is quite a good car. Turned up with letterboxes for, for side pods on Friday. Uh what didn't look great, and then they've won by 35 seconds. Yeah, you heard Verstappen come over the radio at the end saying, you know, in his, in his post-race interview, that we set the car up for the race, as you mentioned, and it was we had to compromise the Saturday. Really interesting to hear that a car that's that dominant, they actively said, we'll put, we'll put qualifying to would, one side. Because if you can sacrifice qualifying, the, well, sacrifice and finish P2 by 3,000. Yeah, right. Oh, no. Basically pole anyway. Yeah. Then... Yeah, why why would you not bother doing that? Because of the race is where you score points. Exactly. Yeah, you get all your points on the Sunday. Unless it's a sprint weekend. So, um, Verstappen, of course, basically led every single moment of the race, apart from a short stint where uh, Hamilton was just in front going into turn one. We had five seconds. Yeah, that was it was interesting. It was yeah. good. Um, yeah, he came out in front of Perez. And speaking of Perez, starting in ninth place today, how do you feel about his drive back through the field? you think it was satisfying? It was well, good? we watched this together. Um, and there was a lot of praise for Perez, and yeah, I think he had a good afternoon. But it's praise for him making up for where he should be, like making up to where he should be in the first place. And it was a feisty drive. I think he, given that track, he he could have got stuck, and he didn't. Again, I think he probably should have had second place. Mm, I don't yeah. think he managed that bit well at the end, but um, it was fine. It's just an, I know he was wasn't out in Q uh, Q two this time, but P nine. Considering where that car is, it's still not great. But 
it was a better afternoon for him, so he's got that at least. Uh, but I don't know. It was fine. I understand that. Well, clearly they've compromised the car for the race and they must have done the same for Sergio. And when you're already not great at qualifying, it's already your weaker aspect. I would have maybe asked for a qualifying I'm car. I was saying, I wouldn't mind being up there, you know. I do yeah. kind of need the grid position. But, you know, he... What I was really encouraged by, like you said, it was not the drive back through in the manner that he performed it because he shouldn't be there in the first place. He shouldn't have to overtake six, seven cars to get back to the position that the car belongs in. But it was the vigour, the aggression. It was well tapered it was managed but like he got everything on the track done to the limit it needed to be done by it was cutthroat it was ruthless he wasn't stuck behind him on for absolutely ages every time there was a sniffing of, over- of an overtake he got the car in the right place he got the overtake done and he was off on his way that's what i want to see from sergio i can understand why that will hopefully give him the boost king eggs will go into spa right before the summer break and actually he can carry that form through now for the rest of the season because he does need to have back-to-back several good performances now it can't just be a one-off yeah, I, I do wonder what would happen if Fernando Alonso decided to be a menace because he was stuck behind him at the start of the race. Mm. And then Alonso was like, I've had a ball of that. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, off he goes, Sergio. And if you're, sorry. <laughs> That's why I just belt sweat. my, my headphones. Yeah. Um, so I do wonder whether that would have halted his progress if Alonso decided to, to keep doing what he was doing there. But um, it was more encouraging for Checo this weekend. Oh, apart from the crash in FP1. Yeah, don't do that anymore. Plus, don't do that. Stop hitting the walls. <laughs> Sergio, have you seen that clip of? Um, it's not it's not English commentary, but they're they're reading a sign that was in the crowd. It's the shot of the crowd, and it says "Welcome back, Daniel Ricciardo," and it's literally the next shot it's in the wall. Perez in the wall. It's oh. like something from the office. That is, you can imagine cutting to Ricciardo just kind of awkwardly looking at the camera, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> Jim 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 Ricciardo, Jim Ricciardo there. Yeah, brilliant. So, yeah, all round, a very good weekend for Red Bull. Uh, Max Verstappen takes home the absolute maximum points that he can. He got that fastest lap as well, which is pretty mighty. And this is this is a good turnaround for Sergio. We're very interested to hear what you lot all listening think about Sergio's comeback. Do you think the comeback was worthy? Do you think that he should have started you know, back on the top three anyway? Uh, is he just doing what the bare minimum needs to be done? Uh, but I guess we should look at... Our uh, moment of the race, driving not on the race, at the end. I'll no, we'll do that later. This mate. is why Ben runs this. This is honestly, I didn't know that Ben wasn't here today until Sam came over and was like, "Oh, we've got to do the schedule." And I was like, "Why?" Yeah, and then that's how said, out of it you are. Yeah, I was like, we're also both hungover. Yeah, Ben Ben's at a wedding. We got drunk last night. Yeah, um, is that the was that the washing machine? I can feel vibrating. Oh yeah, I am bouncing in this seat because of the washing machine. A lot like going this. on. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Woo! Uh, like I'm on an exercise ball. Um, uh, what did you drive of the day? Ah, okay. What do you think? Who who really impressed you today? Max was pretty good at the F1 again today. Ah, he's, he's all right. That that Max. He's all right. Oh, do you know? I'll go for. I'll go for Lando Norris. Yeah, British, British bias. Oh, lovely bit of British bias. I know he he was slightly fortunate with getting pitted first, but I think after that he had he was the quicker McLaren today. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I just enjoyed his radio messages when he slags everyone off. I can't believe not the top 10. that. Can't be- what are they even racing for? Nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. If you're outside the top 10, you are nothing. Not like that He's McLaren has been outside the top 10 for half the races. Eternally with annoyed at his race engineer. Just hates him. Please leave me alone. Um, so I'll go for nice. Obviously, Verstappen is a clear contender here. I will give an, not for Drive of the Day, but honorary shout out to Ricardo because I think given he was punted, yeah, not a, a welcome back, Ricardo. Yeah, have some of that. Um, I thought it was a good recovery drive to get back to where, at least where he started, given yeah. that car is a tractor. Yeah, no, fair. He did a good job. And I, I'm not saying, yeah, he deserves the driver of the day shout, but considering he beats and we'll get on this properly later. It's a commendable effort for your first weekend, and we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit more towards the end of the show. Um, for me, I think you've already mentioned a couple. Norris, Max, uh, George Russell, um, I think was actually pretty decent. I know that we talk about comebacks. Yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I got a great team radio from George there. Um, I know that we don't tend to applaud the comebacks because if you put yourself there in the first place, whether it be you or the team, you yeah. know, you're out of position because you're in one of the best cars. It should be easy. But that Mercedes clearly didn't have endless pace. I know Hamilton put it on pole, but it felt more like that was a Hamilton thing than a car thing. Yeah. Um, and it isn't like Perez, who is driving around in the now the most dominant car of all time in terms of racing performance. I think George had a really, really strong race, and I'm going to give it to Georgie Russ. Wow. I know. Huge. It's, it's, it impressed me today. It, it was impressive, because um, 
given where he started and he finished in front of both Ferraris. Right. We'll get on to that again. Oh, Ferrari. Oh, 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 oh the pain. The pain. Uh, actually yeah. quite glad Ben isn't here because I do think he'd have absolutely lost his head. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, on the other, on the flip side, on the flip, maybe in reverse it, you've got the worst driver of the day. Anyone take your mind? Uh, well, a couple. Magnussen, again, was pretty slow. He was really far back, wasn't he? He's quite far back. Because nothing bad happened to him. No. Um, but I'll go for Zhou Guan Yu because that is hero to zero stuff. He really learnt off Valtteri, didn't he? <laughs> Get a bad start. Get a bad start. Bowling ball. Hit everyone else. It's like a classic frustration uh, thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, I need to make up immediately the time that I've just lost so I won't break. Yeah. I mean, that obviously ruined, ruined his day, but he ruined it for himself with the bad start. I don't know what happened with the bad start, but... Um, don't take it out on Daniel Ricciardo's rear end. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people like to take a lot of things out on Daniel Ricciardo's rear end, yeah, but he, preferably... He slapped that booty. Woo! <laughs> but preferably not the Alfa Romeo itself. Um, that's not a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, who am I going for on this one? I mean, Joe's obviously a great shout. I'm going to try and steer clear of it because we're already hanging it as an answer. It's hard not to look at the likes of the Ferrari drivers today. They work good. Yeah. You know, they, they didn't do anything exactly wrong. It was just like Leclerc got himself that five second time penalty. He was not on it all day. He's screaming at his engineers who don't know what's going on. To be fair. Free yeah, that again, man. Yeah. Free points, Science was quite slow, there. actually. Science was also slow. The fact that, you know, he stuck on those soft tyres and couldn't get the, the move done. Well, the fact that Leclerc still got back past him despite having a nine second pit stop. Yeah, that's painful. Yeah. Um, and I think Leclerc ended up beating Science because of, even with the penalty applied, he was far enough ahead. Yeah. It's not. I'm ga- I might actually have to go science now. I've thought about it <laughs> because even though Leclerc got the penalty, he still beat his teammate. Um, yeah. yeah, Carlos Just Ferrari. Check, well, we'll maybe yeah, we're going to speak about Ferrari because it's been a bit of a, a hell hole weekend for them. Couple of weekends actually. Um, okay, big brain strat. Uh, big brain strat. I should have played some of these jingles, shouldn't I? Oh, have we got a big brain strat one? Uh, I think we do. Do you want to play it? Uh, hang on. Look at your little list. Got me a little list there. Oh, bank two. Here We're we getting go. there, folks. Hold on. We're almost there. Oh, Jesus. Uh-huh. Sorry, everyone. We're going to need you to box for wets. What? It's, a, it's not even raining out. What are you talking about? It feels obvious, but for uh, uh, Ferrari again, <laughs> it's hard to not include them in this. The award, the reward, the reward, the award was made for them. I know it was, place. but it feels like someone should try and take the crown off them each yeah. race. But they they just don't help themselves. I think, and I, I didn't know whether to make this my moment of the race, but when a very frustrated Charles Leclerc is definitely seeping through, isn't it? Because he was like it yesterday as well. He's become very annoyed. He's quite annoyed. But when he asked something about the uh, pitting. And then his engineer said, yeah, we'll do that at the end of the race. He's like, no, I want to know when I'm pitting. <laughs> yeah, um, can we talk about the strategy, what's going on? Yeah, we're on it. We'll discuss it at the end of the race. What do you mean the end of the race? I need to go now. I'm in the car. I mean, that one, I mean, I'll leave it. You might have the same other one I was going to say. Well, I was going to, the, the Chloe one was my big brain. Oh, the other one I'll go for then is is Carlos Sainz now fully being a, a race engineer. Yeah, just ta- forget tactician. the engineer. Just him straight to the pit crew. When Perez gets near me, uh, I'm going to box engineer. Good call. Good call. That's your job. <laughs> yeah, pat on the back. Well done, mate. <laughs> well done, Carlos. Well done. Woo! Good call. Um, I love that. And it's like, turn your steering wheel to Sierra or whoever it is. It's like, that's too early. I'm not doing it now. No. I'll do it later. Get lost. Too fair though, Carlos. It's not like you're quick at the same time. Maybe you should stop I mean, poor man's got to, yeah, got to focus <laughs> on strategy. Among the entire team <laughs> from within the cockpit. Um, it is getting worse week on week with Ferrari. We'll go into more detail on them later, but it's, it's, not, it's not positive. Um, suppose we should review our bold predictions. Ugh. I haven't got an abacus because it's Ben's. Ben's got the abacus, taking it with him to the wedding. The abacai. Um, so, well, we'll do Ben's first. Ben's was, I guess Ben five was the closest. Five different constructors in the top five for qualifying. And it was looking handy. Uh, Piastri's absolutely mugged in blind. Sent him for a bag of chips. Yeah. yeah, it was looking very good. I think he just needed Leclerc to beat Perez. Yeah. Which he did. Yeah, I think. <laughs> but Piastri went even quicker. <laughs> Hello. Hi there. It's me. Piastri, the laid back man. <laughs> the man who has no emotion. <laughs> it's uh, so zen all the time Perez push you off uh, Oscar 
Well, they didn't uh, leave me any space. They didn't leave you a lot of room. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, I'll skip. Uh, so, if you're counting that, that's that's nil for Ben. That's but he wasn't far off. What was yours, please, Harry? Mine was points for Daniel Ricciardo on his return. Thirteenth. Yeah, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. And then I very much went down the same route as you. But then just slapped another layer on top. And that other layer turns out to be correct. Was right. But I can't have that. In a classic fashion. Yeah, I, sometimes I really should just limit myself. Just do one, mate. But that, the other one was too simple. Yeah, I think Perez on the podium would have given you slap. Yeah, I get it. That's why I had to yeah, fair. chuck something in. Um, so it's, uh, let's just work that out. Ben, on the radio here. Um, All right. What does that mean, Ben? <laughs> For our bold prediction, not please. doing a Ben impression. You can't. <laughs> Terrible. Um, uh, I think. Uh, oh, it's nil, nil, nil. Ah, oh, still nil, nil, nil. So I'm still losing. Um, can't wait for the Twitter account to get <laughs> taken. If over. Twitter's still here, I could say I might have deleted my account by that point. <laughs> threads, threads, it is. You can take over my Threads account. Um, I got a lot of followers on that. Yeah. Well. Uh, Anything else we'd say in that first first segment? Let me check the schedule. You check the schedule, wedge, mate. I, I mean, I've got keeping it to yourself. I am. <laughs> I'll get the sketch. What else is on there? Um, no, we're good. That's topic that one done. Uh, Let's uh, get, a sa- break? get a sandwich. All right, and we'll we'll see you in a minute, folks. Make it a nice sandwich because this is this is going to be a tough listen. <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> we'll buckle up. So in for the outbreak, and we'll catch you straight after. Nice. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Pat ourselves on the back. <laughs> Okay, welcome back for topic two of this Harry and Sam Bananza. A Samanza. A Sam Bangza. <laughs> Ham Sam Bangza. It's not a thing. Let's stop saying it. Um, so we're going to talk about the other teams that have kind of cropped up and down, kind of the second fastest team spot that we've had throughout the season. There's been a lot in that section, like four teams, I'd argue, now have been the second fastest car um, and it, we all seem to leapfrog each other so Maka right another podium Lando Norris sticks it with another second place and Oscar Piastri again looked achingly close to being inside the top three ended up finishing fifth place um, what are they doing their fortunes are crazy they're having a great time very good weekend for McLaren I think obviously the obvious podium uh, is oh, chili, <laughs> the chilli bottle it's a chilli it's going <laughs> in the chilli <laughs> I get thirsty. I got to drink my cold water. <laughs> Man's thirsty, um, but yeah, obviously the, from the outside, the podium is yes, it's a great result. But I think given where they've got that second podium, I'm Hungary and Silverstone. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's gone down the wrong hole. Oh. Do you want to carry on with your point, mate? Sorry. You, are you dying? <laughs> He's still dying. I'm dying. Yeah, sorry. Carry on. Okay. Given the difference in Hungary and Silverstone, just checking something. I'm all right. Again. I'm okay, good. good. Um, this is a very good weekend for McLaren. Yeah. And and I think Aston Martin, Mercedes, Ferrari are all going to go away scratching. I know Mercedes is still a good race, but still going to go away scratching their heads somewhat. Because where have McLaren come from? <laughs> what what have they been doing? They were in 1973 about three weeks ago. And now they're uh, the, it's, here. It's quite a shock how, how uh, quickly they've risen up to, well, for the past two weekends, second best team. So... Very intrigued to see if that carries on into Spa next week. I guess it, I'd hazard a guess it will because, you know, Spa and Silverstone, quite high speed. And Austria. And Austria, they were good, weren't they? Yeah, very true. I mean, obviously, Norris only had the upgrades in Austria, but he was still clinging on comfort yeah, to the back of the Ferraris. Exactly. So this, so far, it's, it's very encouraging for McLaren because it looks like it's a car that's good everywhere. Yeah. No, I've, I've, that's, you've made a really good point there, I think, is the diversity of that car. It's the ability to perform not at one set location. Because we've seen that with the likes of what Aston Martin did, right? On front-loaded tracks, they were not good. I think, yeah, they were good at, yeah. Right? You know, the things, things like Monaco, great, okay. But then they were struggling further Spain. and further and further, yeah. So, currently, McLaren are hitting all the right points at every track. And they're maximising that Mercedes engine as well because they don't seem to be properly slowing a straight line at all they anymore. They were so slow. The drag is gone. Where? Where has the drag gone? <laughs> Like, where is the rum gone? <laughs> as far as the Caribbean reference. We drunk it last night. We, it's we drank a lot of it, yes. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. And Norris is relishing the upgrades. You know, this is the Norris that we, we came to get used to when um, it was like 2021 and 2020, when that car was really up there fighting with Ferrari. It could have been the third or fourth fastest car in the championship, but it just missed out. This is the Norris that we have heaped praise on. And I, I think the first half of this season 
was one of his poorest for an opening few races. And I don't know if there was frustration there, if the car just didn't sit properly with him. Um, you know, it happens. But now the car has turned around. He has really jumped on it and driven it fantastically well the last few races. Do you have any thoughts on Piastri? Of course, he wasn't right behind Norris this time. He did drop back considerably, didn't like the hard tyre, ended up finishing yeah. behind Perez and Hamilton. I, I still think it was a, good, a really good race from Piastri. I know from the outside it will look like he was P2 and then he's finished P5. I, I say P2 on, on lap one. But, I, he's, you know, he's still a rookie and, and this is only the second race where he has, he's had a competitive car. Yeah, true. Um, I think there's still a lot of learning going on there. So, yeah, I think Norris is... Pr- give Norris the tools and he's de- he'll deliver. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Piastri's learn- learning that the hard way. But I, I still think it's an encouraging weekend given where they were on the grid together, right next to each other. Uh, his his opening stint of the race was was good, solid, yeah, and I think it was quicker than Norris in that first yeah, part. The gap got bigger, um, and I th- yeah, and the rest of the race I think is just a bit of a learning experience to to uh, hold on hold on to his tyres a bit better because Norris good, so it's in there. It's just I think Piastri needs to learn. So McLaren, if they can keep up this performance with the car, that lineup is looking tidy. Do you think they're on track to have the best lineup in the grid at the moment? You could think Hamilton, maybe Russell is probably the Russell yeah. is still, but but it's it's if you want a consistent lineup, it's closer than it was, right? Yeah, I think this is it's exactly why they got Piastri and, and ditched Mister Ricardo. So, um, very encouraging. Yeah, for, for Oscar. yeah. I, I'm I'm not worried, not yet. I think you know he's had two, like you said, two races in a car that actually performed, and he did such a stellar job in Silverstone. and was really unlucky to not get that podium in the first time of asking. It was only because of the safety car that he missed out on that, of course. And you're right, in the first stint, I think the gap was maybe two and a half, three seconds by the time they came into pit. So he he wasn't holding Norris up in any way. He was really quite competitive. I just think he needs to clearly learn how to manage those different tyre compounds because the, the hard tyre really got to him. He wanted to come in as soon as possible. He wanted to get the tyres off. And he had to be coached a little bit by the race engineer to be like, you know, you've got to hit this. You've got to get to this point. Otherwise, it's not viable. You won't be able to make it to the end competitively. So... I'm a little worried that maybe he can't maintain that in certain different conditions. But, you know, time with, he'll learn, yeah. he'll grow. If he keeps watching Norris, because Norris is actually, when you think about it, really quite experienced in the car now. He's been here for, what, five seasons now? This is his fifth year? 2019 was his first year. So was it 19? 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Yeah. So this is year his fifth five. season now, which is, you know, he's not getting on. That sounds ridiculous. But Old man. Old man. But he's, you know, he's a, one of the more experienced drivers, one of the more consistent drivers on the grid now. So he'd do well to learn from Norris and, and look into what he's able to do when driving the car. But fifth place feels, if you just said to me at the start of the weekend, Piastri will finish fifth, Norris will finish second. Good weekend. Yeah, okay, that's solid. You know, I'm not, I'm not wowed by it, but I'm happy. I didn't, I didn't, they were they were playing down their weekend before it even started. And I, if I'm honest, I didn't have them. I thought Aston Martin would be back here this weekend. Uh, I didn't have Macca on uh, a Macca on the podium. So I don't think none of us did, did we? No. Uh, I had Leclerc on the podium. Lol. <laughs> Suss you, mate. You, yeah. you don't know how to do anything. Well, that's true. So yeah, I, it's it's a very encouraging. Now very speaking encouraging of weekend. of cars that have been the second fastest car. And, you know, we did just bring them up because you thought they were going to be on the podium. Mm. What is happening to Ferrari? They came out of Silverstone. Freddie Vass said that, you know, we're too conservative. The tyres weren't working for us. We need to be more aggressive with what's going on. Strasky was a mess today. The tyres weren't really working for them. Leclerc gets a penalty. Sykes is just slow. Yeah. What What is going on? That, that just, that car's slow, man. It's just not, um, I, it's been the case a lot this year where it just doesn't have the pace in the race. Nice. Uh the race pace. The race pace. And it's the same again today. I don't think it matters what tyre they put on. I know Ben's made the point that they're only better on softer tyres, but I don't think any of them were good for... So, so had a good start, right? He got right up behind Leclerc, but... He had the soft tyres on, so... Yeah, he made up two, three places, and then he just sat there. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I don't... I just don't think Fry have the inherent pace to do anything apart from... Finish. What are they finishing in the end? Seventh and eighth. Yeah, because Russ obviously got the uh, the penalty advantage yeah. from Leclerc. So yeah, he jumped them right at the end there. So yes, yeah, so they were seventh and eighth. I, of I, course, yeah, I think ninth and tenth. I think as you well, you've given Georgie Russ the driver of the day. But if you're being overtaken or beaten by a guy that starts in eighteenth, yeah, and you've started at least Leclerc started in 
like seventh mm. in the top ten. Yeah, fifth. Don't know. In the top ten, could, you can literally say a number. I'll say yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> um, and and signs were still in front of him in eleventh. Yeah. So I think that's that's that is the worst part of their weekend yeah. for Ferrari because that's just not acceptable. Not when they were directly competing with the likes of Mercedes and Asking at the very start of the season and they were regularly beating them out for points. They looked like they could quite comfortably be the second fastest car and claim that spot in the championship. But at this rate, they could finish this season fifth. Do you remember Leclerc got a podium once? I do remember that. <laughs> Carlos Sainz still struggling to get there. Him and Stroll, I think, the only two drivers within those top... So other than Al Piastri, I guess, who's entered the race. Yeah. But every single other every single other driver within those teams has picked up at least one podium. Even Ocon's got a podium. Even bloody Ocon's got one. Um, and we saw what happened to them. That was a disaster start for Alpine. Bless Le two plan. races in a row. Shocking. Uh, yeah, Ben will love that one. That's all a part of, of Le Plan. He'll be happy with that. <laughs> Still looking smug, though. Not sure what about. We'll find out soon. Ferrari are developing what feels like the wrong way. Um, I thought Freddie Vass would come in and give them the culture shock that they need and will start to build up from the ground up again, change the foundations, change the way of thinking. He's a very developmental focused guy. He's very good at the, the aero, the chassis development. He's got a lot of history with success in that region. And I know it's not been long, right? He's only been in the job seven months. And for an F1 team, it takes time to change it. And maybe he's working behind the scenes to go, look, this car is what it is. 2024 is actually what we're focusing on. Maybe that's the case. And I hope it is because if they actively are putting in all their their budget, all their time into this 2023 car, that's really worrying because, you know, they brought Freddie Vassin from outside to change things up, but also wasn't giving them what they needed. They needed this difference in leadership and this change. But we're starting to see these strategic errors, the, the, the arguments over the radio, the car is going backwards, the, the updates that they're bringing, unlike teams like Mercedes and McLaren, I'm not allowing them to take that step forward, that big leap forward that the other teams are getting. Nothing is is looking good for Ferrari right now. There isn't a shining light for them. No, and the the sense of frustration you get from both drivers now with the radios is that's a real real worry because they they don't trust their team. You don't to want do to lose your right drivers, job. do you? You don't want to lose their mentality. No. Um, I just was thinking. Ferrari basically sacrificed, obviously, after 2019 when something happened with their engine. It was no longer fast. Who knows what that was? Oh, I'm not sure. No idea. Nothing illegal here. Um, They sacrificed 2020 and 2021, effectively, for these new regs. Yeah. And so far, they've won a few races last year. Yeah, it felt tantalisingly close for them in 22. And I think by the end of the season, the Red Bull was just better you know comfortably yeah. better but the start of that season i think they could make a bigger impact had they got the things like the strategy correct more often right i think we could have taken it to a few more races towards the end yeah, what of the is year. It? japan it ended yeah um but i think yeah it could maybe have got to into the americas at least yeah and they broke down a couple of times leclerc was leading in spain and Azerbaijan, wasn't he so yeah it's just uh, just a uh, consider where they are now you like they sacrificed so much in those two years for these new rules and they're Basically, where they were in in those two years, arguably slipping further back. Yeah, if they if they finish as the fifth fastest constructor at the end of this season, if that's where they are in the points tally, if if McLaren beat them, if Aston beat them, Mercedes beat them, and of course Red Bull, this season has been an utter failure. I would class it as a complete failure. Yeah, but don't fire Freddie Bass yet. Oh God, no! Try and let yeah, him put his time. philosophy into into workings. And I am hoping, like I said, that the development is fully focused on 2024 because boy do they need it oh boy oh boy um the other team again that have been struggling that were once the second fastest car aston martin ninth and tenth today not good have we talked about them already not in full detail oh. like i mentioned um yeah i was i was surprised uh at their pace today i mean thought alonso might have been a bit quicker but it was quite evident early on that he because he dropped off the Ferraris at the start fairly quickly. He kept chatting like he was going to be quicker, didn't he? To a two tenths quicker, mate. So I'm, I'm going to get there. So he's seven seconds behind Fernando. So when are you going to do it? Yeah, so a, a tough one. I, I, as I said, I thought this was going to be a better weekend for them, given what the strengths of that car is. Yeah. Are. Strengths, strengths are, strengths are. Well done. God, English. Strengths are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> help. <laughs> It's hard like a tire break. Oh um, We're trying. Yeah, it's it's. I think they're going to be leaving, scratching their heads somewhat because 
I, I know Ben said it at the time, but it's it's ringing more and more true. Monaco and and I guess Canada, but Monaco especially are looking more and more like missed opportunities. They could they could have won that. Monaco definitely. Yeah. So yeah, I think they're going to be slightly confused because yeah, today they were they were behind Red Bull, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes. Yeah, quite comfortably as well. They were a full pit stop behind the Ferrari guys, mm. pretty much. Um, George Russell demolished them from 80th on the grid. You know, also, was, another worry. The same as Ferrari. Yeah. If we're going to give Ferrari stick for that, it's the same for Aston Yeah, Martin. no competition at all, considering that they were faster than Mercedes comfortably for the first few races of the season. Um, and I, the one, I guess, the one compliment I could give them at the moment is Lance Stroll is not too far behind Alonso at the moment. The last few races, he's been, you know, chatting at his heels. Yeah, chatting at it, his heels. It's a new expression. I'm I like it. it. Chatting at his heels. Just like on the floor. <laughs> Hello, I'm coming. Hello, Fernando's heels. I'm going to get you. <laughs> Chatting his heels. <laughs> Your little whippersnapper. <laughs> how, how are you doing today, heels? Hello, heels. I mean, uh, he's a god. Well, I, w- I would look at his I heels. I would chat his heels too. Yeah. <laughs> Love but the yeah, heels. Yeah, you're right. I think um, he was kind of like hanging around, not in the top 10 stroll, and then sort of popped Make up it in 10th. All of a sudden, he's right behind. Well, not right behind Fernando, but you know, he's the next car in line. He did what he needed. Arguably, he's the second driver of the team. He did what he needed to do. He finished the spot behind the lead driver. Yeah. I, yeah. It's not a great positive to take home, but I do feel like it is a positive that they can take home. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll see. I think uh, they probably expected a bit more from the weekend. I mean, they were only, what was it, four tenths off in, or Alonso was in quali, but... Well, I mean, the top ten were only five tenths off. Yeah. If folks if you didn't know, end. joint closest top ten of all time from that qualifying session on Saturday. So, you know, it does show how on a one lap pace... The grid is tightening. It is. Qualifying this year, excellent. Immense. Races, uh, less immense. Yeah, that was maybe one of the worst races of the season so far. I think far, that actually. was the worst race Do you think it season. was the worst race of the season? Well, I'm annoyed about because I really bigged it up. I really bigged up Hungary. It's also... We've talked about tyres so much, and I'm not going to keep going on, but like, even with two stops... Yeah, a potential free stop on the horizon was spoken about, you know. And it's still... Still didn't deliver. No, no, it was not great. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, Aston need to, need to work out what they're doing. Maybe again, they're committing now to 2024 and they've realised that the chance that success has come and gone. They, you know, Red Bull have got the wing, so what's the point in pushing? I, I, I think they're in for a tough few races now because we've got Spa, Zandvoort, Monza. I don't think any of those are going to be great, but I think Singapore is probably going like to be the next one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, I Sanford could go their way. It's a bit Canada Monaco esque in terms of it's quite flowy, corners. swoopy corners, but like very tight. So if they can get in a good grid position on the Saturday, yeah, then they might be able to hold off. But you're right; it's not looking too positive for them. And with the rise of McLaren and for are always just plucking away in there, it's hard to see where their next couple of podiums come from, especially after Fernando came out with that aggressively fighting talk that they won't be off the we uh, won't be on the podium again. Apparently, off the podium, however it works, English. Yeah. It's so hard today. Oh, God, let's move on. Oh, God. Anyway, yeah, that's, another break. That's the other topic, too. We're going to go <laughs> we'll have a nap. A struggle. This is a struggle. Let's have a nap. We've got this. Um, and we'll be back refreshed, I'm sure, for, for topic three, where we're going to be talking. What are we talking about? You tell me, son. We're talking about Mercedes. We. See you in a bit. <laughs> God, let me rest. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. <laughs> Did you get any sleep? Because <laughs> we didn't. We didn't actually. Didn't have a nap in the end. No, we're all aboard the LB struggle bus. Um, choo choo. And it really is struggling. Very much the Alpine of the weekend we are. Yes. I think we're the Alpine of podcast. <laughs> Done by Corner One. We're smug about nothing. <laughs> what are we smug about? <laughs> we're terrible at this. <laughs> anyway, Mercedes had quite a... Um, Difference in fortunes on the Saturday. George Russell only 18th, and arguably the team are to blame for this. But you know he could have got a lapping earlier on in the session and made it work. But then Lewis Hamilton outdrove what I think the Mercedes was capable of doing, stuck it on pole position, and broke the Max Verstappen streak. So, how do you think their weekend went from those positions to the race? Do you think they've maximised what was achievable for them? I it's it's clear that they that car's still not there in race pace and like we said maybe they went from more of a quality setup which for George is a bit painful because he barely did any oof um I, I it was slightly disappointing uh, look that clearly the Red Bull is just a rocket ship but you do feel maybe Mercedes if they'd been in the 
well, if Russell had been up there and also if Hamilton had managed to cling on to at least P2, not oh, not even the lead. What a dud start that was. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a shame. So I think they'll leave today. Oh God, I think I need to cough. <laughs> oh God, he's dying, folks. Sorry. That's us both gone out. Um, I, yeah, I think they'll leave today satisfied but disappointed. I think Hamilton should have been on the podium. I've had a lot of times where I've been satisfied but disappointed. <laughs> Should be your new Twitter bio. Satisfied, but disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get that on a t shirt. Um, yeah, I think Hamilton probably should have been on the podium today. And you saw he had the pace at the end. He almost caught Perez. He was close. Uh, so I think, yeah, that there's probably an element of frustration in that they didn't maybe fin- at least finish P2 with him. I think he could have had yeah. Norris as well, if I'm being honest. You think so? I know the pace is a, they struggled a bit, but then they were sort of caught. He was caught behind Piastri as well. So I don't know. They were struggling with cooling, that sort of thing, so, which has been an issue before. They really do struggle with cooling, actually. The Mercedes always seems to have a problem. I think they really close off a lot of the air vents to produce a lot of speed. Open them up, mate. Hey. Well, I think it's getting slower. Oh, it won't blow up. Boom. <laughs> boom. There goes your race. Mercedes, <laughs> boom. Are you turning down the engine? No, no, we're just doing something with the temperatures. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Sure. But you're definitely turning down the engine. Um, so, yeah, look, I think great to have someone else on pole position. Yeah, that was cool. And it made for great a good Saturday. From Hamilton. It was a great laugh. It made for a very exciting Saturday. Yeah, so c- commend them on that and commend Hamilton on that. They obviously did mess up slightly with uh, Russell's uh, Russell's positioning. And I, I agree in what you're saying that Russell should have get, got the lap in, but I think the track was like ramping up so yeah. much that even yeah. if he had done an amazing lap beforehand, he still would have been out. Do you think, though, because they did it with Verstappen in, in Q2, and Christian Horner even came on the radio to Sky Sports to discuss it, and they said, we're not bothering with any of this risk. We're sending him out with three or four minutes to go. Get yeah. the lap in, mate. They should have done that for Russell, really. But well, both Mercs, they were. We saw they were well, not on qualifying chat, but they were caught up in, um, yeah, traffic there. So I, 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 that was a bit of a mess. But yeah, Hamilton had a obviously a great lap in Q three, got pole position. So I don't think they were necessarily expecting to win today, but I think maybe they could have maximised it slightly more. Yeah, the start from Hamilton was a re- was really disappointing. It felt like initially he got away well, and you thought, okay, Hamilton and Max. Go into turn one, wheel to wheel. Max gets the lead. Oh, okay. Not not a problem. Not the end of the world. We kind of all expected Red Bull to win this one. And I did say in the midweek preview that this is going to be one of the most dominant races we see from Red Bull. It just fits for them so brilliantly. And I was proven correct. Maybe I should go with that more often. Yes. Definitely should do that. Um, You know, and if Hamilton comes out of, you know, lap one in second place, then the nature of Hungary means that perhaps he stays ahead of Piastri for the whole race. Um, you know, and Norris is the car that maybe threatens him throughout. And maybe he gets third place at the end. Maybe Perez catches them. We don't know. I also think they kept him out in that final stint uh, before this final pit stop, rather, a couple of laps too long. Yeah, I get the, the offset they were going for, which obviously worked. He got Piastri. He almost got Perez. Maybe they could have... Yeah, if, yeah, two laps earlier. Might have helped. You know, the, the tyre life, of course, would have maybe dipped. Who knows? But I, do, I feel like, you know, yeah, a podium was a fair shout. It wasn't exactly out of reach. In terms of George Russell coming through the comeback, though, um, we have discussed it for Driver of the Day. And, you know, some great radio messages from George there. You know, every time he got a move done. Yeah, baby! We actually commented that we hadn't heard much from Russell yeah. this race, which was sad. And then he did that. And then also he goes, I really think we should be stopping right now. Consider boxing. Yeah. Four laps to go, George. Closes up and signs immediately. Yeah, overtook them and then nearly got the clear. Ha, got him. Ha, the old one-two there. Yeah. Flip your baby and reverse it on my... Pit radio. Um, so yeah, I think I think Russell was was really positive. Actually, I th- really I think Russell really maximised the weekend after qualifying. I don't think he could have got any more out of that race. I think what, no, what six I points, eight, uh, six place, eight points. I really do think that that's a he can walk away happy. That's a really solid performance for him in a car that is never gonna. It's not a dominant car right now. It's not like Perez doing it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I people are gonna say I'm a Hamilton hater. I know I have that reputation, but I'm not. But even he admit, like he admitted on the radio, because he said sorry. Yeah, he could have done that whole start. Even even if not the, well, obviously the start itself could have been better. But I think just the way he positioned the whole, he defended heavily for Verstappen, but then he got hung out to dry. Yeah, and then Piastri and Norris got past him. Yeah, and you can tell he knew that he sort of messed that up a bit. Yeah, I don't. You know, it feels harsh, but it did feel like a bit of a rookie start from from Lewis. It wasn't. He's had better. It, well, yeah, I mean, he's had a lot of them. 
So yes, he has had better, but this wasn't good. You know, your first time on pole, he didn't, for, you didn't read it that well. When was the last time he got a, a bloody pole position? Twenty twenty one. Yeah, Brazil twenty twenty. No, he did get. No, he was uh, Abu Dhabi. No, no, before that, uh, Saudi Arabia twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's ringing bells. Text. Whatever. A while ago. Towards the end of 2021, that was the last time we got a poll. And I get, you know, been a while, but you have got 104 of them, mate. So, you know, you've done this more than anyone else ever. Um, it was really bad. It was really poor. Confirmation from K Dog. Yeah. It's Jeddah. Yeah, thank you, K Dog. <laughs> Producer Kersky coming in clutch, as always. The only <laughs> sane member of this group. Um, yeah, so, you know, you think. I'm Lewis Hamilton. I'm the seven-time world champion. I've got one, over 100 race wins. I've got over 100 pole positions. I should know how to manage the start of a race. And yeah, I think maybe I, I'm sounding like I'm being a little harsh here, but I was really disappointed. By the end, halfway through lap one, your fourth place, start to fall back even further. I was let down. Also, I was let down because I wanted an excited Grand Prix, and that felt like the way we were going to get it, you know? Yeah, I was just a bit surprised. He's raced Verstappen a lot now. Mm. I think it was obvious that once Verstappen was alongside uh, in that run down to turn one, he was always going to break later and hang him out to dry. He didn't, and that's the thing. I think the move was completely fair. It was, and it was completely fair. But he just, I was just a bit, I don't know, a bit surprised that Hamilton didn't try something else to cut back. How many times do you get or, plague at the same game? Yeah. Anyway, so it's, I guess, yeah, as you say, it comes from a place of disappointment more than anything else. That after such an excited quality, and yes, as, as I say, Mercedes probably weren't going to win the race, but. It would have been if he holds on to second. To there, a do you think Lewis Hamilton gets second in the race? Quite possibly, yeah. Because I guess maybe they won't have the cooling issues because Verstappen would have run off anyway. Um, it, it, he definitely would have been on that. I think the podium at least. So the question at the start of this topic was: Do you think that Mercedes have maximised the weekend? And you're going with sort of good. That is so you. <laughs> It'd be more you. It's a yes or no question. And I said sort of. Good. Uh, well, I think the... Well, I guess in that case, no. So I think Russell did. I don't think Hamilton did. I don't th- I think Hamilton maximised Saturday. Russell maximised yeah, Sunday. Yeah, So together, they, sort of. they got half of it. So that's where my sort of comes from. They're half. Half. Max. Oh, bloody hate this show sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, my eyes are so heavy. I know it sounds ridiculous. It sounds going to fall asleep. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm absolutely shattered. Um... All right, well, let's know your thoughts on Mercedes, folks. Discord link is in the description. We'd love to have you in there. Loads of new joiners recently. It's really, really good. This isn't the end of the show, I'm just saying. You know, get in there now. Is it not? No. Oh, no. No, no, no. We've got topic four yet to go. Uh, what are we doing? Our break for that one. Or You're just going to roll into no, it? No, I'm doing our break. You're crazy. I'm just teasing. You're we, doing our we break. We need the dollar. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'll see you after this. We're going to be talking Ricardo and K-Mag, who have had two kind of juxtaposing weekends. Nice. See you in a minute. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, we're back. Uh, slowly losing our minds. Ooh, it's quite hot in here. It's very warm. Very warm. It's very very hot. Just got the fan. Very hot, um, and we're very very tired. And we're going to be talking about someone who also might be very very tired because it was their first race back in you know half a season or so. Yeah, might be feeling it. Daniel Ricciardo, he got absolutely punting on the first lap by Joe Guang Yu. Yep, amazing his carding obliterate because the two LPs around him did. Um, I'm going to be quite gutting if he retired lap one, turn yeah. one of the race. But how do you feel it went for him as a race? I think the entire weekend has been very good for Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah, um, yeah as I said, I mentioned in my driver of the day uh, pick, he, obviously he wasn't. But but I think given he obviously started in a pretty good place, it's the first time that AlphaTauri have not been out in Q3 since Monaco, I think Q1. they said. Out in... Yeah, sorry, Q1. Uh, so that was impressive in itself. And then the fact they got punted and was last, for, I was like, oh, no. Like, he was he was running around in 18th for like, quite a long time. I and didn't I was understand like, what was going on with some of the strategies. It kept blowing my mind how like Yuki was in 11th and then he was last and, and then uh, Ricardo was suddenly in 13th. And I'm thinking, how are you still here? So And that that good, they had like a, a strategy of he pitted, did 10 laps on the hards. Yeah. And then pitted again for mediums. And then he did, he did probably one of the longest last stints on the medium tyres. And I think that in itself is fairly impressive because he jumped everyone. But he wasn't... I thought... I said this to you. I thought he was going to be under pressure towards Dropping the like end. No one. Nope. Not, not, not even close. Didn't and matter. I think he was sort of catching Bottas. So I think he did exactly what he needed to do this weekend. And I actually think it was quite impressive. And maybe that's experience coming in there for Ricardo to not... 
not uh, let his head drop and and you know carry on because I know it was only thirteenth, but that that car's rubbish. Well, that's the thing. You say only thirteenth, but he's in the worst car on the grid, and he got punted on the first lap. He's off the track, facing the wrong way. Yeah, and he's managed to beat his teammate by three spots. Um, so forget qualifying. It doesn't matter that he's starting in front of him because by the first corner. He's at the back of the grid anyway. Yeah. He's managed to outdrive a lot of, you know, key drivers who are on the grid around him. You know, he's beat both the Williams comfortably. Where did Hulkenberg finish? I've forgotten. I think he was behind 14th. Well, there you go. So he's beat Hulkenberg and started well in front of him as well. But that's the Haas, man. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> hey, you know, he was, again, he's off the track after being rear-ended by an Alfa yeah. Romeo, you yeah, know. True. Um, right behind Bottas, as you mentioned, he was catching Albon as well. You know, it was good, really solid. And... I think he will walk away from that and they'll go, okay, 13th, good result. But when you break it down, how he actually got to 13th place, that's what's so much more impressive from him. I think you're right, though. I think race experience came into this for him. I think he took a hold of the strategy. Didn't like the hard tyres, quite publicly said, not liking these tyres. Got off them, made the mediums work for himself. Yeah, I, 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 it kind of flew under the radar, as you say, because a lot of weird strategies going on. But I think that, that last stint from him was... Very, very good. Very solid. Very solid. So, so far, Danny Rick, very good weekend. The right call to put him in over De Vries. At the, at the moment... Hard to say after one weekend, it but it's gone weekend, well, right? It's, it's gone well. This is being the best drive from that seat all season. Yes. I don't think De Vries fin- has finished higher than... That. Well, maybe in... De Vries get any points? No. No. Nah. You got nah, nah. Ah. Um, right, and then kind of juxtaposing that that very good weekend was quite a bad weekend was uh, Kevin Magnussen. So Nico Hulkenberg again in Q3 for qualifying. He loves a bit of quality because Nico um, flies under the radar a little bit just how good his qualifying performances have been this season. Give Nico Hulkenberg a quick race car. <laughs> please. Please. Let, give him the Aston. He was only in it three seasons ago. Yeah, it, he's dunking on K-Mag in quality at the moment and that's that's got to be a bit of a worry for... For old Kevin. And where did Kevin start? Back row of the grid? He was... 19th? He might have been 17th. I don't know. I thought that was Yuki. And then... Ah, uh, maybe it was. Russell was 18th. Yeah, anyway. Uh, anyway, he was, yeah, in that back section, he was nowhere near Nico the entire race. And I know the Haas is not good on its race pace. It's got to be worrying, though. It's got to be worrying in comparison to his teammate. Yeah, it's not... It's not um... It's not great. And and I know he's not crashing like Mick Schumacher was last year, but it's sort of the... What's the matter? What's the point? Yeah, yeah. It, but it is the Hulkenberg to Magnussen. If they're going to be consistent with that, you'd have to say this, gonna, maybe they'll start asking questions about Magnussen, but it's Haas, so probably won't. Um, but yeah, so no, it's not been a good year so far for, for old K-Mag. Uh, Contract's up at the end of the season. Yeah. You think it, currently getting it renewed? I mean, it's Haas again, probably, but... Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's any other team, no. No. Uh, but if it's any other team, they wouldn't be doing this anyway. So, yeah, I think Hulkenberg's proving, uh, proving his talents. Yeah, unexpectedly so. I think, I think myself included, I didn't write Hulkenberg off, but just kind of didn't see the point. Why take a risk on this driver that's not really regularly been in a race seat for quite a few seasons now, who probably doesn't have the racing edge that you expect him to have anymore. Go for someone that's a bit of a risk, that's a bit younger or something like that, give him a chance. But... It's K Mag that should be out the door currently. He's not performing. I know he's got a lovely little newborn and he's probably a bit knacker, bless him. And he's, yeah. you know, the life of a. a Sleepy. Yeah. He's got a, yeah. It's, I, I mean, I'm, I am not experienced with young babies, I must admit. Don't have one of my own. Um, but I imagine it's pretty knackering. I've heard. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. From babies. Oh, right. When are you talking to them? I don't know. <laughs> this is. Oh, God. <laughs> um. Yeah, so he's, he's got to pick it up, though. After the summer break, he's really got to start putting in a shift because if he doesn't have a good second half of the season, I wouldn't be surprised if he's out on his on his bum. I, I just, like I say, we know the Haas just can't do do a race. Um, <laughs> so bad. It's just so, and obviously Hulkenberg always ends up falling down from where he qualifies. But it it's if the car can qualify well, then Magnussen needs to do that as well. Yeah, if Hulkenberg's doing it, Kenny Mag should be capable of doing it. At least, at least Hulkenberg's giving it a chance to try and get in the top 10. We always say, don't we, like, you know, if your driver is one place and the other driver should be maybe one to two places behind, that's a fair... Yeah. You've done all right, you know, that's okay. You should not be eight to nine places down on a regular basis. It's not like this is happening one every 10 races. It is almost every Grand Prix at the moment. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, pick it up. Pick it up, okay, Mike? Pick it up. Okay, so we're going to move on now to our moments of the race, which is, for everyone's sake, thank God, the final we're topic. We're almost there, folks. We're almost there, folks. Thank you for struggling through Hang with us. We appreciate it. Um, Harry, we'll go to you first before we go to our lovely listeners. What was your moment of the race? Um, well, it wasn't a zinger, was it? It wasn't. No, it's not going to go down in, in as a great civil time race. Um, but I'll go for GP, Max Verstappen's engineer, uh, uh, team engineer, coming over the radio just saying, everything okay? You all right? Just, just checking, checking in. Because I feel like it, that was to us as well. Yeah, are you okay? Is everyone watching? Because I know this is boring. I'm sorry, we're, we're like really mom, good. It's like your mum when she comes around the corner in your room. Everything all right? Everything all right? Darling, you're feeling all right, are you? Love. You're like, oh, thanks, mum. Yeah, just checking that Max is still awake. Yeah, literally cruise control. Yeah. So I'll go for that because it feels appropriate. I'd like to, when Max is that far ahead, I'd like to challenge him to try and do a lap with his eyes closed. <laughs> Not like... <laughs> It has to be the fastest lap, but can he just make it round? Because I think he probably could. I bet you know that track well enough yeah. that you could probably work out the timing easily enough to do it. That's a good idea. That's fun. Next time, Matt. Let's try you, that. When you get plus 30 ahead, you have to do a lap with your eyes closed. That's the new F1 rules. Um, what am I saying about my moment of the race? It was hard to pick, wasn't it? Let's all be real. Um, it's, it's not fun. The race wasn't great. The, the fight between Perez and Piastri was good. You know, it, it, it is a squeeze, but, you know, we, we kind of agreed that it was on the limit, but the right side of that limit. Enjoyed that. Um, I think I might actually just go for Ferrari's team radios today. Yeah, it's been, been solid stuff. Yeah, I also just enjoyed, as we've already mentioned, George Russell going, yeah, baby. <laughs> Quite enjoyed that. Lando Norris just hating on everything. I can't believe he said they were racing for nothing. It's so disrespectful. He was there like four races ago. <laughs> you were in like 13th place. What do you mean racing for nothing? Get out of the way. You're racing for nothing. Oh, you waste of my space. Get out of the way. <laughs> um, anyway, that's that's it from us. Let's hear from the lovely Discord listeners. Harry, who do we have? First up, we have Real Dad uh, and James from Budapest. Lovely. This is Real Dad and James live and yeah. direct from the Hungarian Grand Prix here in the grandstand with our moment of the race. Our moment of the race is Joe going bowling. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, he just crashed under a garden and then Ricardo went to Ocon and Ocon into Gasly. I mean, terrible race for Alpine. About the, the whole weekend they practiced for this and two minutes of racing. Uh, I mean, like, but us probably teach them how to do it. <laughs> here we go. Anyway, over and out here from Hungary. Been a great weekend, apart from the catering. Thank you, guys. Bye. Oh, oh. apart from the I did get the catering there from Real Dad. Blimey, what's wrong with the catering? Real Dad, real food reviews. <laughs> <laughs> they can move on to doing food reviews. I would love that. Uh, honestly, best duo in F1. Yeah, not us. That's for sure. Uh, is this is this in first time? This is a, a firsty. Sensational name. Here we go. Shall I introduce? No, it? let Just... them introduce themselves. Perfect. It's a big ham, and my moment of the race is Lando Norris absolutely whinging on team radio, complaining all the time. But I love him, baby Lando. <sighs> Thank you, a big ham. A big ham. It's a great name. Great name. Uh, next is All Good Always from a Plane. Hi, Late Breaking. Um, hopefully you can hear me, but um, I'm because I'm on the plane and I'm going to be flying off soon. But um, my moment of the race has got to be the Ferrari radio messages. I mean, it's hilarious. Anyway, thank you guys for the comments um, on the last on the last podcast. It was so nice, and I'll, I hope that I can provide more wonderful light and comments um, for the rest of the podcast. Love you guys. Love the podcast. Bye. What do we say? We just, oh, you didn't say anything, but you weren't here. Classic. You're classic you, that is. You didn't say anything. No one was hearing you because there ain't a microphone in front of your mouth. I said she was always very lovely and brought very posy vibes. Posy vibes. I agree. Uh, the next first up, timey. Another first timey. The one car guy. Hey, what up, guys? At Late Breaking. I'm a long time listener, but first time submitter. Uh, my moment of the race today was when Joe tried to do his best about to rebut us, um in Hungary um, impersonation, and he tried to bowl with the F1 cars, but he only took out two Alpines and tried to take out Danny Ricardo. That's about it. After that, I kind of fell asleep to, to the whole race. So keep up, keep on doing you guys. See you. I, I wish I could have fallen asleep. 
<laughs> I could I could do with an Sorry hour. That. I'm quite tired. Now. All right. Well, you will, we'll get you home soon. When I, I've got to go home. Oh, yeah. Christ. Yeah. You're not staying here. Oh, um, all right. Next up is Callie, who may or may not be happy about Daniel Ricardo. Harry. Sam, Hello. Ben. Hello. He's not here. He's not here. What's going on, guys? Another race to be proud of. Hungary does not disappoint. Greatest race of the season so far. Guys. You know why? <laughs> you know why? Because Daniel Ricardo is back, baby. Loves him. Moment of the race. Danny Ricardo being back, beating Yuki Tsunoda in his first race back, man. What a day. What a day. Me and my girlfriend are on our way to the aquarium right now. <laughs> I was watching the race on the way down. I thought my tattoo cursed this man, but he's back, baby. Let's go. He'll be swimming with the fishes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he will be. Cheers, Callie. Um, oh, no. I said to see that message from <laughs> Uh, right, next up is everyone's second favourite, Hazza. Right, boys, my mum at the race for the Hungarian Grand Prix. <laughs> well, there's so many to pick from. It could have been the DRS overtake into Turn 1, or who could forget the DRS overtake into Turn 1. Oh, yeah. But all things considered, I'm going to go with the DRS overtake into Turn 1. Cheers, oh, boys. Fantastic Great submission choice. there from Hazza. That is the kind of banter we, we do. Well, I, I love it. It's really on our level. Um, next up is, who have we got here? Oh God, I'm, right, here we go. Yizzy Pavlenka. Great name, sounds like a tennis player. Uh, hello, I'm going to probably say uh, GP, asking Max if he was okay, and uh, he just yeah. said, I'm all good. It's just, he's too chill, it's, in, it's insane. <laughs> he's very chill. Yeah, I'm fine, mate. I love it. How are you? Uh, another first time from So Astro. many, out of space submissions. Yep. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Sam here. All Long right. time listener, yeah. first time submitter. My moment of the race was definitely Lewis Hamilton getting absolutely cooked off the line. <laughs> uh, I'm a big Lewis Hamilton fan. Went crazy for pole position yesterday and was disappointed. Thanks, guys. Man, it's so sad. Roast his own fa- so, favorite driver. So disappointing in life. <laughs> do you want to yes. do this one live? I, Steph can't drive. You submitted this whilst we've been recording. So oh, we're going to take a real sweet risk. Lord. If this is bad, it's all on you. This is getting edited out, isn't it? Right, here we go. Steph can't drive. Please, please be good. So not necessarily a moment of the race, but the highlight for me was watching the F1 Juniors broadcast <laughs> of the Grand Prix. Oh, yeah. It was so much fun. The kids were having an absolute blast. The graphics were really cute and super engaging. Harry Benjamin did a great job of explaining everything and getting the young commentators involved. It was so great to see young and diverse talent leading the commentary. I hope they do more of them. It was so fun. Oh, wholesome, that was. Wholesome, good quality. Wow. Steph, you've not let us down there. Cheers, Steph. You might not be able to drive, but you can submit. Steph can submit. <laughs> do more. Change your name to that. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Good, um, good, good. I'd like to see more images from the, the youngsters, the junior show. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a few. I've seen a couple, but I'd like to see some more clips because it's very hard when you've got to do the show, this podcast, to keep an eye on the, the kids one. This one. They're all flying. <laughs> why? Well, I don't know why, but I... Lap 22, they put all the F1 cars in as balloons. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something I would do for fun. <laughs> it's like we've got control of the broadcast. <laughs> I know what we're doing, X-Lap. Put yeah. them all on balloons. Also, it says Verstappen, leader, exclamation mark. I like that. <laughs> he so is the we're leader. Gonna, we're just discussing pictures you can't see, but... Yeah, sorry, but you can look like, it up. looks like a lot of fun. Maybe we'll watch it like that next time. I would like to put all the drivers in balloons on lap 22. Um, oh, it's 59 minutes. We bloody made it. We've, we've got to an hour. Good Lord. I can't believe we've made it through. I mean, I don't mind doing them just you and me. Obviously, when Benny Boy is not here, I think most of the time it'll be fine. The bloody washing machine is going, <laughs> I am vibrating. <laughs> um, but because we're both so tired, this has been a bit of a struggle today. It's been, it's been a lot. So for all of those that have stuck with it, we do really appreciate you. Thank you. And please stick around because the next episode... <gasps> Is episode 300. 300! <laughs> <laughs> um, which is mad. Uh, We've got some big stuff going on for 300. <laughs> Do what, what are you doing? Uh, you'll find out. And you'll find out what I'm doing too. Oh, so episode 300. Better come and listen to episode yeah. 300. We've, we've known about this for a long time. We've still not really planned anything. How many times have we sat down and gone, what should we do for 300? 
Yeah. And they never fans. come up with a decision. Anyway, there'll be some bits on there. Um, but, but it's also the Spa. Belgian GP <laughs> Spa preview. Yeah. yeah. Belgian GP preview. That's big week. Harry will be there for it. As far as I'm aware, yes. Ben will be there for it. As far as we're aware, yes. I will be there for it. As far as you are aware, yes. And to me, that makes three. <laughs> three! <laughs> <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Come on, right, let's go. Right, Discord's in the description. If you want more content, I don't know why you went after this. <laughs> Lord. Thing, Patreon is available to you. You get two extra episodes and beer with breaking on the top tier and a birthday shout out, which we're going to be doing on the 300th episode. We are. We are doing it. Don't you worry, I will remember. Um, also, come and follow our social media, Late Breaking F1, on both Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, also, have a little look at the videos that we're doing. Everything we're recording at the moment goes up in video format as well. A vlog? You might have already mentioned this. Yeah, we've, we've done our Winners oh, like Fan Zone f- vlog. Like we, Kirsty. Kirsty did a great job. We've also learned we need microphones. Yeah, portable mic- oh, yeah. microphones. Oh, yeah. We've got these ones. We need ones portable for being out. Yeah, because our audio was not good. It's not good. Sorry if we asked you for a bold prediction at that event, but we never used that. Because it was just unusable. <laughs> We're really bad at it. It's just lots of noise and me still with a cardboard thing with random people. When you watch it back, it wasn't the best content. We've done better. We have. Um, but don't worry, wrong. we're learning, we're, we're practising, we're trying new things, and there'll be lots more real-life content coming soon. But go give YouTube a, a subscribe. We really appreciate it. We're trying to grow it. Uh, I think that's everything. We've made it through. In the meantime, I've been Samuel Sage. And I've been sorry. <laughs> and remember, <laughs> keep breaking late. Oh, Finally, I can rest. Thank God. <laughs>